Right, morning, everybody. Hi, and uh, I, uh, welcome to the last round of the Baytech Feeder Masters Winter Pairs. Uh, thanks to everybody for the great support uh, throughout the league today. Um, Obviously, it's a long lead, loads of effort put in by everybody. We're going to have the results back afterwards. It's great to see as many of you as possible afterwards, after all the effort you've put in this year. Clap the winners, don't forget it's the top 10. Literally anything could happen today, as we know. Uh, we're going to fish uh, 10.30 till 3.30, same as we have been fishing. This week, we lost a uh, fellow feeder angler in England, Masters International, Andy Boss. Some of you all know Andy very well, some of you won't know Andy. Um, I knew Andy well, uh, Mick knew Andy well, great guy, uh, big loss to um, everybody who uh, live he touches, so I just think an extra round of applause for his silver medal with the team this year in the World Masters is more than... Good luck today, everybody, and we will see you all back here for the results. Thank you. Peg 103. Yeah. It's got to decide. I don't know where the other one is. Right, let's go in. 46. So this is 46 for... is left in 17. Yeah, exactly. This is for me. B. Yeah, you're bridge and cross, so you've avoided 103. You're sending Goal. Waco to 103. Some... We've got some terrible pegs here, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, give that back. Oh, sorry, mate. So, Waco. Bridge out of 17, sir. That's the last one. Waco's on a. It's amazing. 123. <laughs> <laughs> what, would you, could you have chosen a worse peg? That's fantastic, isn't it? Steve Bart. Steve Bart is his best peg. But I'm on 17. Not even joking. Oh, yeah. That'll be okay, won't it? Just yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> You're not very happy. <laughs> right, let's have a look at my home for today then. Um, peg 91 on Moat Outer. Now, I've got to be totally honest, I'm really disappointed <laughs> because in this league so far, this side of the lake was okay on the first match. And then when it goes cold, we really struggle around here. It's one of those areas where it can be really poor. I think there was like a few ounces here last time, just on the next peg. Um, and they had a match yesterday on the inner and it was very, very poor here. There was some fish down at the bottom. There was actually a 55 pound of bream down opposite this spinner here about opposite peg 100, 103 is the end today, Adam Wakelin. So there might be a few breen down there. Um, but what makes this a little bit tougher for this league is, a bit like last time you joined us here, there was no small fish, there was just an odd big fish. Now it is warmer than that day. I should be really disappointed if it's four fish for six pound, but that is the sort of day that could easily happen here. Um, but it's a bit milder today, although we had some heavy snow in the week. It's milder today and a little bit of a breeze on. So there is a chance, but the last couple of rounds of this league, small fish have done really well. I actually managed 22 pound of roach and small skimmers last time on bridge. Brilliant, brilliant fishing. And there's a lot of pegs that can do that today. There's at least half the pegs in the match that can do that today. Probably more to be fair. Um, and me and my partner, Will Freeman, we're 10 ounces off the, 12 ounces, 10 ounces, something like that, off the leaders. So literally, practically leading. Um, Luke Armitage and Brian Searle leading. They've drawn really well today. Luke Armitage has drawn 17 on moat, which I would have hand-picked, no doubt. I'm sure Luke would say the same. Uh, Brian has drawn 52 on bridge which is a good draw, lots of bites there. I think Brian will catch a few fish there. I think he'll do well there. Um, Frankie Janicelli's drawn 39 on this lake with Steve Ring on two on Croft, two on Croft's got potential. One of those pegs, that could throw 30 pound up. You know, Steve's an amazing angler and um, there's a lot of bites to be had there. So he could 
he could they're dangerous they are i really fancy them to do well but chris green size has drawn 14 end peg on this lake with his partner ben holmes drawing 28 on bridge that's an amazing set of draws so the three other pairs have drawn an amazing set of pegs in my opinion and <laughs> not to sound like a doomsayer but definitely mine and wills is the worst but this is fishing i'm gonna say this is fishing you don't know let's come and have a little look at my setup down here right you have to like get in the water a little bit look um so i've got the bloodworm joker casters maggots pinkies again as last time probably enough bait there for an absolute lifetime not changed from last time the plan today is slightly different um we'll be introducing a short line today so last time i was looking at like 15 25 35 today i'm just going 15 30 and then short like seven seven eight meters um and i'm just hoping there's a few bites at seven eight meters i don't think there will be but you know there you can see my rods i've got two 10 foot sls and 11 foot superior x for across i've got a 12 foot superior x just if in case i want to put any bait in across um which i might do i might put a little bit of bait in across because sort of looking at it thinking you know an odd fish across isn't going to do us any good i probably need like 10 good fish across and i think the only way to catch those is to probably be a bit more positive with bait so that's where we're at that's the situation as after the draw driving here this morning i've cut i always come with frankie on this league and um frankie we were just saying even though they're frankie and steve ring are 12 pound behind me and will um they've they've drawn two picks today that on paper are you know certainly 12 pound better so it becomes level playing field so let's see we've got we've got that little bit of a cushion to take rob will no doubt tell you about his peg and his draw with his partner on paper, Adam Wakelin down there could catch five or six pounds, but he could catch a load of skimmers. So I think we'll have a little wander down the bank. Hope that's giving you a bit of an insight into what we're up against today. Let's see how we get on. We have done it again. Underwater footage is a game changer when you're trying to learn about fishing. And we have gone and got some incredible stuff. The clearest footage we have ever got. Big fish feeding right in front of the camera. We're feeding, hooking fish, playing fish in front of the camera. We see exactly how those big fish react in a fishing situation. Bait such as pellet and corn, worm and caster. And remember, there is hours of underwater footage, method feeder, float, margin for big carp, shallow fishing. It's all there on the Edge website, www.anglingedge.co.uk. And now you can join on YouTube too. If you love YouTube, Join on our Ed's YouTube channel and you can watch all this incredible underwater footage. There he is, Will Freeman. How's it going? Yeah, good, mate. Good. On a flyer, in the bowl. Yeah, Cape's gone. Taught me through it, Will. Used to be a flyer. Used to be a flyer. Yeah. Taught me through it, what's your approach? Used to catch a great big bream there, didn't they? Up to about a couple of days ago. I'm going to go right close because Will's a quiet talker. <laughs> gone so they used to get big bream there up until yeah, yeah about a couple of days ago and then it's gone since then what you think they've all moved out yeah yeah i think they've gone up there a little bit <laughs> you, you know where, where where frankie always draws yeah near near uh, where i am today they always do well yeah, but i think the fish are here i think the fish are here i'll tell you what it's getting and i drove as i drove in all these lakes are getting loads of pressure from overhead birds aren't they yeah. and i think it's pushing the fish around so yeah yeah, you could see that in the other one, you, you know, the fish are shoulder up tight, there's areas where you don't want to draw. But uh, there's quite a few fish moving today. It's in a few carp top. Yeah, there's a few carp top. Normally moving. where there's been a few carp top, you catch a few skimmers, so mm -hmm. we'll see. So Fingers what, crossed. you've got a mountain of bait. Yeah. More bait than everyone else put together. Yeah, most of it's for feeding the birds. Are you going for it? Most of it's for feeding the birds and then uh, six bloodworm and half a dozen joker for... Uh, Fishing with. Yeah. Load of gear. Looks the pot. What's your target weight? 40 pounds. 40 pounds? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going for 40 pounds. I'm going to have to because Lee's on such a bad peg. I've got to catch oh, enough. Yeah, but he's moaned and moaned and moaned, hasn't it? But I think well, it's great not, where he is. He's not moaned. He's too busy tripping over his bottom lip trying yeah. to get to his peg. I think it's great where he is. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's, they've had a little cold snap, haven't they? But What's that? An oyster catcher, Will. That's an oyster catcher, isn't it? Yes. 
Oyster catcher. The, um, the last two nights have been really mild though, haven't they? Mm, so. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. All right, good luck. Good luck, dude. On your bungalow. Tell you what, we've had some rain. River's pushing through. Didn't fancy trotting my free BB stick down there. Nice to see Will Freeman ready to go. Rich Vaughan, been catching loads of fish. Been catching loads of fish in this league, Rich has. Let's go and have a look at the, the peg. Peg 17 I'm on. And this is bridge outer. So, can be a, a reasonable area this can. I think earlier in the league, this had been one of the most consistent areas, but I think the fish are a bit more spread out now. There's some better weights from around the other side of the lake as well, potentially. So, see down there, three rods. A bit more bait today because I think, or I hope, the fish are gonna have a feed. I'm not going to have a cast to the far bank. Might be a mistake, but I'm hoping that everything's going to be short. So I've got three swims, really. Two main swims, one at 15 metres, one at just six metres out. Where I can underarm the feeder onto that short line. And then six metres down the bank towards this tree. I can have a plop down there as well, maybe catch a few perch or an odd fish down the side. So everything's going to be short. Me and Adam need to go for it. Adam has drew peg 103 on moat, which, if I'm honest, has been absolutely appalling all through this league. But now the water's warmed up. Apparently, I've been told by several people that that's where the skimmers are. Now the water's warmed up. Hopefully they have a go. I don't know if you can see out there, down the middle, there's a lot of fizzing two pegs down a lot of fizzing hopefully that's fish feeding so ruling at 10 30 i'm going to put my keep nets in i'm going to go quite aggressive at the start on my six meter line drop on to 15 meters hopefully get a few early fish and then we're going to have a brilliant storming last half of the match short 20 pound is the target weight. Anything more than that's going to be a massive bonus, I think.
I, I put a little bit of bait in on those two lines like I talked about so I put a little bit of bait in across like three feeder falls nice blob of joker in each one and that was at 15 and 30 meters and then I started short because I thought well if I can catch a few fish let some bigger fish settle that's my only chance of catching like five or six better fish now what's happened is on the next peg, I've seen Gaz Mumby catch two. I've heard um, Tom Noton had three in his first three casts. He's to, you know, a couple to Gaz's left. Doug hadn't had any to my right. Um, but I thought, never, nevertheless, I'll go and have a chuck out. I've had a two pound of first chuck in. Literally after about 90 seconds, caught one two pound. And then I've had a really frustrating 30 minutes where I've heard of Odden's being caught. I've seen Odden's being caught. Doug on my right caught three. And I had to sort of try and fish a bit bigger baits because there was lots of tiny fish in my peg. Hopefully those have passed because I've just had two in the last 15 minutes. So now I'm on three. I've probably got six pound with my three fish. So, you know, there was a lot of fear from everybody on this bank that we were out of the race here. But if there is a few of these bigger fish, you know, 10, 10 12 fish today could be 20 pounds. So we might not be completely out of it just yet. I mean, there's a long way to go. It's three and a half hours left to go and I've got three. Um... Maybe I missed out on a couple of early ones by leaving it, but it's one of those you try to 
you try to make the judgments based on the time. But anyway, I've just settled down. I've just literally caught my third, so quite excited to see what's going to happen here because I don't think we're completely out of it if there is a few bigger fish having a feed on this side. It's, uh, you know, we haven't come short yet, so there's a chance a few fish might come short as well. Let's see. Well, that was a nice day's fishing. Not the 20 pound that I was hoping for, but I reckon we've got 12 or 15 pound. We've not weighed in yet. That's my guess. Hopefully I've underestimated massively. We've caught hand size skimmers. None of those massive skimmers, those three pounders that I was hoping for, but I wonder if, whether it's been a bit calm, bright sun earlier on in the day. Maybe that's just put those bigger fish off. Let me talk you through it because we've caught at that five meter line, six meters it was actually. And it's been awkward. We've not been able to put many fish together. It's been a, a bit of a bitted and bobbin day. Feeder sizes, we've changed that all the way through the day. Let me just show you the feeders that we've, that we've used. So you've seen our little micro feeder collection, no doubt, but 
we've been through the whole lot today. We've caught a few on a slightly more in, encased feeder. A few on the old four square wire. Little where uh, three square was good at some points, but other times the little tiny micro feeder has been the one. A very changeable dam sand, not really caught two fish on the same thing. Maggots have been a good bait. Bloodworm was brilliant middle of the match to get a bite, but maggots were better fish later on when there was a few better fish there. One of the issues I've had, and I think everyone on this lake has had the same thing, is there's a lot of little tiny roach and they are tiny. And if you're putting on smaller baits, you seem, you seem to get ragged off easy. So bloodworm at some points was, was too difficult to fish. That's why changing your feeders around, putting different baits in your feeder helped out with that. Obviously, the more joker we fed, the more of those little roach we got in our peg. So we had to think about it. Like I say, I reckon I've got 12 or 15 pound, no carp. Hopefully I've underestimated and hopefully Waco's got a lot more. <coughs> Well, I think it is when it's like that. They're, that. they're the type of fish, aren't they? 15 2. See so what our part is going to be. Well, really, really disappointed. But I suppose it's to be expected. 12 pound 8 of weight. Um, just just caught nothing the last hour and a half. Gaz here for 14 pound and he's had four big ones in the last 30 minutes on his longer line and I've sort of committed to my shorter line towards the end. Maybe if I'd have stayed long, you know, four those four fish would have been seven pound he's had. So, um, you know, big difference. They make a big difference. Um, it's been a 26 pound on the end from Adam Wakeman on the end, pegs at 26 pound. Brilliant, brilliant weight that is today. Um, I have had my partner's caught, which is great. I'm just, I'm just disappointed. I think like another three or four pound, and I could have been excited that potentially we could have won the league. But I think it'll be real, a really, really big ask with such a low weight um, there. But it is what it is. Try my absolute hardest. Um, when there's only a few big fish involved, I've only had about eight fish, I think. You know, you know a few more fish can make the difference, but for whatever reason, just not been able to catch them here. They just seem to have run out here these next few pegs as the day's gone on. So, here's what it is. Uh, let's see how Rob's done, and um, just get back and uh, see what the results say. I used to be a terrible angler on the river, on the canal, on the lake, on the rod, on the pole, and then I hit the join button on the Edge YouTube channel. Now I catch one of these every cast. For years I was the laughing stock of my club. I hated going fishing. Every week my mates would bully me. Sir Blanks a lot they kept calling me. It was terrible. Couldn't catch a thing. And now those anglers want to be me and their wives want to be with me. Before that, I was a loser. Now I win every time. Yeah! Join the edge. I'm not joining the edge. Why do I want to do that? It's like, literally ridiculous. You know, like, I am so good at fishing. It's, it's, I fish matches every single week. I even, do you know, I won a section once. What do you mean by default? Anyway, listen, I'm not joining any rubbish, too clamp it. Don't care how good they are. I'm the best. Nobody's as good as me. When I first started fishing, I had a cabinet full of cobwebs, but then I clicked the join button on the Edge YouTube page. Now I've got a cabinet full of these. There you go, folks. It's so easy to get better at fishing. All you've got to do is hit the join button on the Edge YouTube page. There's loads of content that's going to help you 
catch more fish. The underwater videos have transformed my fishing alone. Then there's all the tactical stuff. You can be, like me, winning match after match just by joining the Edge YouTube membership section. In fifth place with 158.7, the comeback kids, Rob Woodson and Adam Wakefield. Well done, guys. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. missed out in the end. Everybody's favourites, Luke Armitage and Brian Stone. Well done, well done. In third place with 172 pounds seven, picking up 800 quid, the ever consistent Chris Greenside and Ben Holmes. Well done, well done. Second place, 1100 quid, Will Freeman and Lee well, Kerry. Well, 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 well. Building it, chiropractors tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to win it three times in a row means you're absolutely sensational. 1500 quid, Steve Ringer and well, Frankie Gallantelli. Well, 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 well,